A few weeks ago, I published a video series exploring the popular Ruby on Rails based content management system, Refinery. In this video, I'm going to have a look at another Ruby on Rails based CMS named Chameleon. Chameleon aims to replicate the look, feel, and features of WordPress much better than any other Ruby based system out there. Much like WordPress, themes and plugins are a central part of Chameleon's architecture. And just like any other good CMS, this program gives you a full set of features to perform administrative functions and manage imported media. By the way, if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe my channel and hit the like button. So let's get started. When choosing a central framework for any project you're creating, I think a strong community of developers who use the tool is advantageous because it increases the chances that you'll be able to find support and that the project will be maintained going into the future. So if GitHub activity is any gauge as to how popular a particular platform is among a community, then Chameleon does seem to have a decent amount of interest for a Ruby gem with over 1,000 stars. In comparison, Refinery has about 3,700 stars. But this kind of makes sense when you consider that Chameleon is a much newer system, having been created in 2016, about six years after Refinery was started. Now, let's create a development instance of Chameleon. Uh, Chameleon? Chameleon? So when doing the setup for this application, I'm going to be following the guides in the documentation section of the Chameleon website. It seems that the general best practice for initiating a new app is to start with a Rails project first, and then you add Chameleon as a gem on top of it. So here we're going to clear up all of the extra comments made by the Rails generator on this new Rails app, insert my favorite debugging tools, Slim, Postgres, and then finally I'm going to add the Chameleon gem. So then it's time to go about setting up the database configuration, the docker compose file, docker file, and making the static volumes and networks for the docker related dependencies. Then I'm going to go ahead and build this thing. By the way, I skip over a lot of the coding details because I like to edit out the ironing of silly roadblocks, like how I got stumped by the spelling error I made here. If you want to take a closer look at the finished code for this example, go ahead and visit the GitHub link in the video description. So now that the Docker and database configuration is all set up, next we want to run the Chameleon CMS generator to create the initial folder structure and configuration files. Importantly, this generator drops a file into your project called system.json, which gives you a few settings that you can customize. Refinery had something similar to this, but used a configuration file written in Ruby. It's important that you make sure that you got the settings the way that you want them here before the next step, because the database migrations are affected by that DB table prefix setting. Next, we can run on the command line the generator for the database migrations. And as you can see, this generator creates some chameleon related tables for storing your site content. We can run those migrations and take a look at them in our schema.rb file. Now when we load the website on localhost for the first time, the sub screen appears, allowing us to create the initial administrator account. So when initially doing this, I ran into a problem. It couldn't find the method called decorate somewhere in the middle of the program and I couldn't find anything about it on the GitHub issues board, so I downloaded the Ruby gem source code and looked around myself. Decorate is a method associated with the popular Ruby gem named Draper, which provides an implementation of the decorator design pattern. A decorator basically adds a set of utility methods to a Ruby object from a library, and it's activated by calling this decorate method. Decorators were a trendy idea in the early 2010s, but I don't really like it as a design pattern because of this very problem. Its usage can be confusing if you're unfamiliar with the Draper gem, and it adds some complexity in locating the code being added to the object, and the Draper gem itself introduces yet another dependency which can be problematic when you're upgrading your program to another version of Ruby on Rails. So this 
problem seemed to be caused by the program not even recognizing that Draper was being used at the offending line. I was able to fix this by forcing Draper to be required in the program engine initialization code by putting in a require statement. And I posted a message about this issue on the GitHub issues page and Owen, the project's primary maintainer, pointed out to me that I overlooked an important step in my project's initial setup. I needed to specify the dependency of Draper version 3 in my gem file. So I gave that a try and that worked too. So now we can go ahead and log in using the default administrator password. When I first logged into Chameleon CMS, I was very much impressed with the look of this admin panel. It starts off with a nice little tutorial to help you find your way around. And it's very similar to WordPress and Feel, but I haven't played around with WordPress in a while, so I couldn't tell you exactly how it compares one-to-one -one on a feature-to-feature -feature basis. But overall, it has a very nice look. So let's go ahead and make a sample static page. And there it is with the default look. Now let's create a post. One of the things I really like about this system is the look and feel of the editor. It's much more capable than the one that's packaged with Refinery. When I was looking through the code, I noticed that it's actually a Rails integration of a third-party component called TinyMCE. Kind of like WordPress, with Chameleon you have to enter a category for all of your blog posts. So now let's take a look at that page. If I wanted to change the look of the site, you do it by creating or editing a theme in the app themes directory. There it's got a Rails engine-like layout for configuring your templates and incorporating whatever CSS or JavaScript assets that you need. Note that this uses the now legacy method of going through a Rails app and compiling your assets through the Sprockets asset pipeline. The new way of doing things in Rails is to include your front-end assets through Webpacker which is in a different folder, but at this time Chameleon does not support Webpacker. Now one final thing I want to demonstrate is how to include images in your blog post. This editor has a very nice manager for image content that lets you drag and drop files into the browser. You can also easily add styling and control the picture dimensions. Something to note however is that by default, whatever you upload gets stored on your local server in the public media directory which may not be preferable depending on the kind of server setup you're running. This could be a problem if you're hosting your site on an ephemeral web server, instance like AWS EC2, because your site content will vanish if the server restarts. Chameleon does have an option to integrate Amazon S3 for asset storage, but unfortunately it does not yet support the Rails feature Active Storage, which gives you a layer of middleware that allows you to be more flexible in your media storage options. So finally, here's an example of how you could add some styling to your images. You could also control the width and height of the image. And as you can see here, we're resizing this one to 450 pixels. So what type of audience is Chameleon best suited for? I think this is a great tool for somebody who wants a blogging tool that they can easily customize and create add-ons for, but is more comfortable doing so in Ruby on Rails than they would be in creating a WordPress plugin in PHP. Ruby on Rails is a powerful framework for productivity, and I would imagine with Chameleon it would be fairly easy to create custom forms, backend integrations to more extensive data, or other features that make your content more interactive. For the end users managing the site content, that front end gives you a very familiar feel to WordPress. Both the polished front end interface and the architecture of the way this program handles plugins I think makes Chameleon a more appealing choice to work with over Refinery. That's just my opinion. However, a Chameleon app might be harder to future proof for changes in the underlying technology than WordPress. The biggest disadvantage of this platform, in my opinion, is the small community maintaining it. There are only a few developers actively working on updating the gem, 
and I've seen projects like this die off in cases where if the original developers move on to something else and no longer have time to support it, then the program gets outdated and can't be used with newer versions of Ruby. Chameleon is only about five years old, but the code is showing its age because it doesn't integrate well with the latest Rails features like Webpacker or Active Storage. Plus, it's got that Graper version 3 dependency hanging out there, which may cause some issues in the future. On the GitHub issues board, it seems that the original developers would like to update this gem with a major update, but just haven't gotten around to finishing yet. So stay tuned because Chameleon may be getting an upgrade in the near future. That concludes my review of this Ruby on Rails based CMS system. Don't forget to check out my three part series on another great Ruby tool, Refinery. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.